actually insane cipher buff and a huge raise nerf that is what is happening in the patch 7 0.9 i'm gonna talk about it today and break it all down so let's just jump straight into it there's a pbe patch so uh we are not certain that this is gonna be the actual finished like numbers and like you know maybe something will be added but typically in the past every single pbe uh, patch notes were exactly the same as they were posted so later on we should have at least a very similar or almost the same or literally the same patch so we're gonna read it out and then make a correction if anything is changed in the actual live patch but the, uh, there are big changes here in this uh entire patch they're gonna shake up the entire meta game so first cypher's trapwire has the decreased time until the trap concusses a captured enemy from three seconds to a second and a half that's an insane buff and it's the most important buff not even as like not even the fact that the trap is not killed when someone goes into the trap is as big of a buff as this is so let me explain to you so uh wait i had a video on my profile uh let me check it uh here we go this one you can literally see how it works right now on uh on this video when someone goes into the trap the trap stuns and then stays still active so another person can go into it right so if people just run through uh they're gonna still be caught in the trap after half a second so that's how it works. You have to destroy the trap to, to essentially not catch more people. But that is not as important because those traps will gonna get destroyed at some point. But the biggest buff is the fact that this person that goes into the trap gets stunned af after a second and a half. That's the biggest buff. Because right now how it works is a person needs to stand in the trap for full three seconds and then he gets stunned and then be, be dealt five damage. By the way, I also heard... A rumor that the damage is 15 i don't know if it's true uh might not be true but the point is um right now when someone goes into the trap he cannot just ignore the trap he cannot wait for someone else to, de to destroy the trap you need to destroy it instantly otherwise you're stunned and this makes the trap incredibly valuable right now because it's an actual threat to your opponents so you're gonna have to like you can actually go for more surprise cypher traps because they're gonna be legit kill traps right now rather than go for like surprise traps that still require you to make sure that you kill the moment someone goes into the trap right so because you have another threat that the person has to deal with that one second and a half stun is gonna be incredibly annoying to play against right and also there's a Duration of the tag slow when hit by the trap increased to two seconds. So that's nuts. You're you're moving slower. If you get stunned, you're moving slower for two full seconds. Like that's absolutely unreal, right? So um, there are changes also to Sky and Fade. So essentially, Sky and Fade, Trailblazer and Prowler. Um, the collision is that if you go for the typical i'm assuming because i can't have um i can't have a, like a pbe account because i'm from europe and i'm not from an a so i can't have a pbe account but i'm guessing is that if you're gonna place like your typical cypher trap which is you crouch and you put it at your eye level those traps are not gonna be destroyed by the prowler and trailblazer and maybe we'll have to check it out but probably that's the case and if that's gonna be the case you don't have to anymore put them higher to avoid the prowlers and trailblazers which is a huge um huge thing right and uh the entire change of this trap like rearming itself also changes the dynamic between agents like sky fade and yoru because you cannot use this anymore to destroy the trap i mean you can get the info right use the clone use the tiger use the prowler it goes through the trap you know where the trap is now and now you can shoot it but the thing is before you could have just used the clone or one of those and just destroy the trap because the first target that tr triggers it that's it the trap is gone right so you need to be more thorough with the way you play the game to make sure that you will clear cypher traps there are there are a huge objective right now uh, it's it's gonna be incredibly important to uh, destroy cypher traps right and there's another thing that makes cypher even better so the biggest change in my eyes right the biggest change 
that above Cypher is not actually any changes in the traps. It's actually something that happened to Raze. So uh, we're going to talk about the Pentrals in a moment, but the biggest change here, this is the biggest change. The, the Blast Pack over here, Satchel doesn't deal damage until fully armed, and the arm time is increased from 0 0.5 seconds to 1.5. So it's funny that at Immortal 3, actually, not many people know that the satchels don't deal damage until armed. Even raise mains. I have, I have found in ranked raise mains that didn't know that you have to wait half a second before the satchel will deal damage. This was a change that was being made, uh, I can't remember, like two years into having raise in the game or something like that. But it's, it's something that not, not many people knew. And now it's going to take a second and a half to deal damage. So essentially there are two outcomes that affect the Cypher here. And this is why this is a buff to Cypher. One, a uh, race cannot just throw a satchel onto a choke point and destroy the satchel in half a second when it lands because it will not deal any da uh, full damage, right? And in the past, you could have also not wait even for the half a second because there was one damage needed for the trap to be destroyed, right? Like, a thrown satchel without the half a second arm would deal like one damage and destroy a trap from the cypher, but would not destroy a armor board from Killjoy, right? But now, not only have to throw the satchel, wait a second and a half, and then detonate it to deal the damage to the utility. So... You're going to have to be very, very thorough to destroy the, the traps, but it also gives the Cypher a moment to counter the Satchel, because if you use the Satchel to destroy the traps and the Cypher hits the Satchel before the 1.5 second mark, then the Satchel will not deal damage and the traps will not be destroyed, right? So that's one thing. And the other way more important thing about uh, Satchels here is that when Raze is Satcheling through to the side with the satchels, she's not going to accidentally destroy any traps on nanoswarms because the satchels will not deal any damage. When you're using the satchel for movement, it doesn't deal any damage, right? If you're like doing the second satchel while mid-jumping, it deals no damage, no traps is going to de get destroyed. So your traps are now way more valuable on choke points because race will just, just not accidentally destroy them when going in which is very important, right? And I think Satchel has one HP point. I'm not certain, but it's one bullet from anything to destroy it. So that's a huge, huge buff to Cypher. It's the probably biggest buff to Cypher. And right after that is the stun, the stun um, activation time. Like that's also huge, right? Um, but in general, Cypher is going to be very, very popular on rank right now. Very popular and it's going to make the game unplayable for some time because people have no idea how to play against uh, agents that have free map control because they never destroy the traps. So we'll see how that goes. Now, the other change to raise is the paint shells. Um, the explosion radius is a little bit smaller from 6 meters to 5.5, from 6 meters to 5.25 for the secondary explosions, right? And the primary grenade explosion minimum from 15 to 1, and secondary also from 15 to 1. Damage multiplier to enemy utility is 100%. Sorry, from 250 to 100%. So I'm not certain we have to check. But if I'm not mistaken, the overall damage, the, the high damage, was not changed. So it should be 220, 225 or 250 with the full grenade. So you should be able to destroy the Killjoy Lockdown, but you have to be pretty precise to do that. Right now, you can't just, just chuck it nearby and fully expect it's going to get destroyed because one shrapnel from the secondary explosion would deal enough damage. That's not going to happen anymore. You have to be pretty precise. We're going to test it out, but it's 100% possible. I just, I just don't know how precise you have to be with the grenade to destroy the Killjoy Utility. Right, to destroy the Killjoy Lockdown. But in general, this is this doesn't really change much against players because players will not stand in the grenade. But hey, at least the range now is like not as punishing. So you can definitely feel more confident when running through the first explosion for the grenade and the secondary explosion then doesn't matter because already run through, right? So I don't think it changes much 
uh, but it's a welcomed nerf anyway. Now, when it comes to the judge nerf, I don't think this changes anything. I'll be honest with you. You know, it's like the bullets from seven to five, it doesn't really matter much because if you're being pushed and you don't kill with the first five bullets, then you're probably dead anyway, right? So this doesn't really matter much. It's about the stall position where you're trying to use the judge to like stop utility from happening on you and you can run out. So you get punished more when opponents will actually use like initiator utility to bait out your shots. And that's now a possibility, which is welcome change, but it doesn't change much because it still has a powerful gun. And these spreads, I don't think the numbers are big enough to matter as well because you're using the gun from up close. And if you're jumping up close, like this spread is probably gonna maybe miss like five to 10% of the damage that you would typically get. So I don't think this will matter at all, but we'll check in the game. Like, um, you know, the, the Stinger Nerf, the, the, the spread on the Stinger Nerf, that was thing that mattered because you could you, you had to change the way that you play with the Stinger, like completely relearn, recoil, and so on. On Judge, I don't think this matters anyway. The most important thing about the Judge is the fire rate, and it wasn't nerfed. So still having the same fire rate with the same damage, you're still going to be a choke uh, holder with potential of multi-kills. With five bullets, you can kill three players. Easy peasy. And that that is making Judge still an incredibly, incredibly efficient weapon for its purpose, for holding close range chokes. So that's gonna be a very rough. Um, <clears throat> sorry for that. It's gonna be very rough to deal with Judge players, unless you use a lot of utility or just straight up avoid them. Then it's easy, right? But yeah, so that's um that's the things that change the most. Other other um, changes here are not really that important, so I don't think I'm going to talk about them right now because there's not much happening here apart from some bug changes. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this breakdown. Uh, we're going to see each other playing this patch on Wednesday live on both YouTube, Twitch, Twitter as well, and maybe, maybe other platforms. But yeah, if you want to see how I play ISO and maybe Cypher on that day, hop in. Uh, if you have any questions, leave a comment, share the video and so on. Thank you for watching. See ya.